<laughs> All right, I'll tell you what, it is getting cold out here. Let's talk about some lettuce. Okay, today we're talking all about how to transplant lettuce using this tray of filler lettuce as an example. I've got about 24 seedlings right here, and I call it filler lettuce because I specifically grew this tray right here without a specific plan of where to plant it. It is intended to fill in any gaps where other plants didn't work out as I expected. Always be growing, always make sure that that garden is as productive as it can be. Okay, let's talk real quick about what size your seedling should be when you transplant them. You can probably tell that these are quite large. If you look underneath, they're already getting a little bit root bound, not too bad. And I do that intentionally. I've experimented with planting out my lettuce seedlings when they're still quite small, you know, just one or two true leaves on there. And you know, they're just this big, which is when you'll see a lot of folks doing them. And I found that those don't do as well as when I wait for them to get a couple inches tall and an inch or two wide like this. I think the reason is twofold. One, they just have a little bit more surface area for photosynthesis when I put them out there, which is particularly nice right now when those days are cold. We want to give them as much of a head start as I can. And two, my ground here is quite tough. It's very, very heavy in clay. And what I found, and this isn't for just lettuce, but all of our seedlings, what I found is that those larger seedlings with more established roots, bigger roots, more roots, they're better able to establish themselves in that tough ground. Smaller seedlings or plants that I grow directly from seed, they're more likely just to fail to get established. And that's why I like to wait until they're about this size. I will say this, go ahead and experiment. Maybe take half a tray, try some when they're a little bit smaller, try some when they're a little bit bigger and see what works for you. We've definitely found that the bigger seedlings do better, but that may not actually be the case in your context. All of these look pretty good. I don't see any signs of legginess, but I will say I have transplanted out plenty of leggy leafy greens, including lettuce, and they tend to still do okay. They might not grow as robust. They might flop over a little bit, but they do still put on size. They still do put on a lot of leaves. And so if you only have slightly leggy seedlings, I would say still go ahead and put them into the ground after waiting for them to be large enough. The next most important thing you can do is hardening them off. Now, hardening off sometimes gets a reputation for being unimportant because it sounds like you're just waiting for them to get used to conditions outside and just being comfortable and that doesn't sound that important but really what we're doing is we're actually giving these leaves a chance to build up their natural defenses they're actually going to grow thicker and that is really important if you've had them inside under a grow light or on a windowsill they really need to grow thicker leaves in order to withstand changing temperatures withstand the pest pressure outside and then most important to withstand those stronger uv rays that they're just not used to another little tip here is before you actually take your seedlings out of the tray, try and wait for the soil to dry up just a little bit. You want it to be moist, not wet. And the reason for that, particularly if the seedlings are still small and they don't have a really big root system in there, is when you pop them out, the soil, when it's really wet, is just gonna kind of fall apart. And that's a huge pain in the butt when you actually go to transplant them. It's much easier if the cell block is kind of well-maintained and keeps its shape. Now, you can see that this one is a little bit root bound. And so that's part of the reason that it's keeping its shape. But the other reason is that I just let the soil dry out a little bit. I hadn't added water for about a day and a half. And that just lets it kind of get to the point where it's easy to handle. It's a pretty seedling, huh? I don't know why I thought that would smell like anything. It's just so beautiful. It seems like it should smell like something good. Now that we've talked about conditions a little bit, it's time to actually remove these seedlings from the tray and put them into this little carrier tray. This is just the uh, propagation tray that I had them in earlier because I always bought them water. And the reason that I'm actually gonna remove them ahead of time from here and put them into this drainless tray is it just makes it much faster and easier to quickly grab them from the tray and put them into the ground. The problem with just bringing them out to the beds when they're still in these is I have to sit there on my hands and knees and pop them out of each of the individual trays. And it's kind of painful, it hurts my knees, it hurts my back. But if I've already got them into this tray and they're already removed, I can really quickly just bend down, make a hole, pop in, bend down, make a hole, pop in. Much, much easier on your body. So if you have more than a few seedlings, I definitely recommend pre-removing them from their actual seed cells and putting them into a propagation tray. The only thing you want to keep in mind is don't leave them out in the sun. The roots don't do really well when they're exposed to a lot of sun and heat. It's a cool day. We're in the shade. They're going to be totally fine for a little while here. So let's go ahead and make that happen. I 
one thing to keep in mind is that you want to be gentle but you don't have to be that precious if you've got a lot of seedlings go ahead and try and move fast it's probably better to get them into the ground quickly instead of making sure that you are not touching any of the other leaves and you're being absolutely perfect about it anyways you want to be gentle but they're not going to just fall apart because you touch them okay these are looking really really nice as you can see we are ready to go pop up into the main garden and go ahead and get them into the ground where i will talk about the actual technique and strategy for making sure that they are transplanted with minimal shock and that they take off as quickly as possible. I've already prepped the garden bed. So we've already added a little bit of organic fertilizer to the area. We went ahead and loosened the soil just using a garden fork to gently kind of aerate it. So the bed itself is good to go. All we need to do is actually get these lettuce seedlings into the ground. So let me show you exactly how to do that. So I'm only gonna be doing one column because I already have a column of kale going this direction. And I'm gonna go ahead and space them out every six inches. This is cut leafy lettuce. It is not head lettuce. So I think I can go ahead and get away with that kind of spacing, but it's gonna just depend on what kind of lettuce you're growing and your context and how much sunlight you have and how dense you like to get them. I have basically found that it's pretty rare for me to come out thinking that I planted my lettuce too densely. One thing to keep in mind though on that front is we've got limited sunlight hours right now. I definitely don't want them competing with each other for that sun. These are not going to get that big and that brings up another good discussion. What time of year should you even be planting lettuce? What time of year should you be transplanting your lettuce? You know it's late November right now and it is colder than lettuce really likes to grow. Right now it's actually quite nice. It's probably in the low 60s. Lettuce in general grows best kind of between 55 and 75. More specifically, it loves to be somewhere around 60 to 65, but it'll grow between 50 and 55 and 75. Unfortunately, we don't have that many hours of temperatures between 55 and 75 left in the year it's just getting too cold for that but just looking at some of our other plants that are currently growing we've got other lettuce in another row and it's still putting on size albeit quite slowly i think we've got at least a few weeks for these lettuce to put on a little bit of size and grow us a little bit of food now if i was planting these into a 30 inch bed i would probably be trying to get four lettuce plants side by side but because this is a relatively narrow bed and because the kale is going to grow fairly large and bushy i'm going to go ahead and only just do the one column of lettuce next to the one column of kale uh, you'll notice that i'm not being you know too meticulous here just make the hole put it in press it in a little bit and one reason for that is i'm actually going to water these in generously gently but generously using overhead water using the hose and that actual pressure from the hose is going to help reduce some of the air pockets that would otherwise be introduced by planting these so quickly and haphazardly we just got a lot of them got a lot to do today so i'm not gonna spend hours and hours and hours getting these into the ground that's it in terms of the transplant again i just did them on six inch spacing two total columns one for our kale one for our lettuce on a mm, let's say 20 inch bed somewhere thereabouts just went ahead quickly used two fingers to plant them in push them down deep and now the most important thing particularly for this lettuce is that we water it in you do not want to let this lettuce heat up too fast we did plant them during kind of the middle of the day, which is really not when you want to do it. I would recommend waiting for late afternoon or the evening. I'm just not going to be available to do that. And because these plants are going to be in the sun for a while and they're going to naturally have a little bit of transplant shock, I'm going to go ahead and do what I can to water them in and make sure they have a little bit of a misting and that's going to really help them uh, not get too hot for the rest of the daylight hours. Oh, and in case you're curious, this is a salad bowl mix from MI Gardener. They're growing really nicely. so. If you want a salad mix, I guess this is one that maybe you should consider. It certainly looks very beautiful. 